Hello everyone and welcome to the Landscape Builder Object Path Tutorial. In Landscape Builder, a group can cover the whole landscape or it can be smaller clearings like towns or villages. An object path is used to populate a spline with prefabs within a group. I have a simple landscape built and I'm going to the Groups tab. I'm going to add a new group. I'm going to keep it as a uniform group because we want to place this path directly in the landscape. I'm going to give it the group name, demo group one. And for my member, I'm going to change my member from a prefab type to an object path type with the object button here. We're just going to turn off zoom on find because we don't need that here at the moment. Let's go into the scene and just we'll turn on the edit object path and then we'll in the scene we'll right click to add some points for our path. And we want to add some objects to it now to our path. So we'll go to objects tab and you'll see we have no other members in this group so we're just going to add a new member now i'm using the lb enviro pack for my prefabs but you can use whatever prefabs you have in the scene so i'm just going to add maybe maybe a fence post drag that in and we need to tell our object path that we're going to use this fence post so on the objects tab we're going to add a new main member and we're just going to select that fence post we added and we can click refresh to get a preview of that in the scene so we've added a few fence posts we might just um, for the sake of this demo we might scale these fence posts up a little so they're a bit more obvious to see there we go. Now there's not many of them on our path and that's because uh, there's a couple of reasons. So first off we need to uh, change the proximity of our fence posts because each of the members of a path still have a bunch of rules that we might want them to adhere to. So let's just do calculate proximity for our fence post and try that again. Let's just uh, maybe move our some of our path points a bit so we can see what's going on. You might have expected the posts now to be right next to each other, but we've not yet set up the object path spacing. So let's go and do that now. So we'll go over to our object path member. We'll click on the layout tab and you'll see we have a spacing distance of 10 meters so let's just reduce that a little bit and click refresh to get a preview of it okay that's a bit better you might have expected this last fence post to be closer to this one the second last one because all the others are more evenly spaced and that's because at the moment we have snap last object to end and there's some good reasons why you might want to do that. But in this particular path, we're just going to turn that off and click refresh to bring that last point back into the rest of the path. We can also change the layout method. So at the moment, we're just using three meter spacing, but we might want to set an exact quantity along the path or even uh, an exact number per 100 meters along our path. Sometimes you wish to sparsely place the objects while maintaining the layout rules. This can give your landscape a more aged look and feel. This is done by reducing the placement cutoff value. So if we reduce this value and click refresh, and we can play around with those values. we're just going to leave ours fully populated so if we close the object path editor 
we'll see our path points all disappear. And that's because we haven't applied our path to the landscape yet. So let's go, just go, go down to populate landscape with groups and apply it to the landscape. There we go, back again. And we can flick between edit mode and back again. And we can move it around a little bit. Come out of edit mode, reapply it to the landscape. You may notice something a little odd here. In the background, we can see this lonely post. And it's not along our path. And that's because we forgot to tell our member, our fence post, to only occur on this path or on a path. So let's go into the the fence post member will click on paths and we'll say use in paths only and let's just reapply that and now our fence posts only occur on the path sometimes you might want to place different objects along the same path so let's try that let's create let's just uh, hide these existing members We'll create a new member, let's make a, an object path, let's call it a wall, we'll turn off find on zoom, and if we just look at our objects, obviously we don't have any at the moment, let's just add a new member, and let's make this member maybe uh, a dry stone wall here we go let's add a few couple of points to our scene maybe one over here to apply across the slope here so we can see what's going on so we need to set up our member a little bit so let's go to the path let's remember to turn off use to turn on this use in paths only. We'll set the proximity, and in this case, we're going to set it to 1.5 meters. Now, by default, members are auto rotated so that they look a little bit more natural, but in this particular case, we actually don't want that functionality. So, we're going to turn off randomize rotation Y. Insert a duplicate of this member and we'll change it out. Maybe this one here. Yep. And we'll duplicate it again. And maybe we'll add the dark version in so we can see the differences in the scene. Back to our objects tab of our path let's just add those members in so we can see what's going on doesn't matter what order i'm just adding them in here okay and then we can refresh our path so we've forgotten to change the layout maybe of our path so let's go to layout and we'll set that to 1.5 meters too and refresh our path that's better so we have our path here 
but it's kind of not looking quite right. It needs to follow the terrain a little better. So let's just go and do that. Let's go into each of our members. And we'll say align with terrain. Let's refresh that. That's a little bit. But the issue now is they seem to be leaning over a little because our because of the curvature of our terrain here, they're on a bit of an angle which doesn't look quite right. No one would really build a dry stone wall looking like that. So to do that, let's go over to our, so if we go to each of our dry stone wall members and we click on the path tab, we'll see there's this lock tilt. So we can turn that on. So we'll do that for each of our members. And refresh. That's better. Now the other thing you'll notice is that our items seem to repeat just constantly and again that's probably going to look a little weird and I've purposely put the dark colour in there of one of the members to kind of show that. We can kind of fix that up a bit by let's going to our path and going to layout and for selection method Let's just change that to random and select that. So that's a little better. Uh, and we can just switch out the... Let's just go back to our objects. And let's go to the dark one. And we can just switch that out. To the light method instead and refresh. There we go. And of course we can exit out of the object editor, apply that to our scene and there's our dry stone fence. We can also create object paths inside manual or procedure clearing groups. I have one I made earlier which I'm going to restore from a template. So I'm just going to get my landscape. I'm going to go down to templates. Here's my template. I'm just going to drop that in there. And I just want to restore the groups. Let's apply that. Let's just zoom in a little. And we can see we have some dry stone walls. And if we go up here a little, we'll see we have some fences as well. We could just go into the groups editor. And you can see we have the fences here and we could, we could edit those fences just like we would it directly in the landscape. And we have all the same features that we did when we created the dry stone wall directly in the landscape. But here we can do it inside a procedural or manual placed group like a town or a village. That's all we have for this tutorial and thank you for watching.
If you have any questions about this tutorial or any other aspect of Landscape Builder, be sure to check out our Unity forum. Thank you and goodbye.